Okay, so now we are resetting up. We've created the paper from scratch, and now we are looking at the type and trying to make it more like type that is actually printed on a letterpress. And the color is one way we can do that. With color overlays, with gradients. So the color, let's see. I can play with how deep it is, how opaque it is. It's not bad that it's dark, but I think I want it a little bit less saturated. Or well, maybe more saturated. It's really hard knowing the variety it's going to have. Right. Let's see, do I like that better or did, did I like it before? Okay, so we could start there. Then what I can do is I can right click and rasterize that layer style, which puts it, because it has a, a gradient fill that has that dissolve in it. Right. And then I can put another gradient over that. But this time the gradient overlay, yeah, will give me some whites and blacks. Kind of like you see here. This isn't a new layer. Let's see, let's, how can I mess with it? Even try. No, it doesn't work. No, it's too, too even. So, Kind of match this a little bit. Okay, then what I can do is actually select them individually and duplicate them. And what that does is it puts that effect separately on each. So the gradient goes across the whole of each one. See that, and then I can play with them individually. Play with the scale, play with the angle. That works, and then this one. Even out the scale, but play with the angle a little differently. That works. Now, what I don't love in each one is the gray. I like the white coming through. Well, let's change the gradient, the dark color, to this really deep red. It's a little bit slightly on the magenta side. that. And then maybe I don't dissolve it anymore. Maybe I try. No. Let's try. Nope. I can dissolve. Yeah, I think that's working. And then do it here. Maybe a slightly different red. Ah, oh, yeah, that's nicer. See that effect there? Okay. And now, yeah, I can take the opacity down on each of these a little bit and maybe rasterize those layer styles a little bit. So then I'll merge them together. So 
is they're each kind of doing their own thing. And again, you can only see the dissolve clearly when you view it at 100%, which is why it can be good to rasterize it too. There, you see it all. So this is helping helping it to look a little bit, a little bit more like the letterpress. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this too. Okay, now we can play with the opacity of all these just slightly. And then merge them together. And now I can try um, doing some kind of funkier things with it, like simply duplicating it, setting the whole thing to multiply, like I just printed over it twice, right? Really deepens it, and then offsetting that. So using the move tool, and just like you see here, kind of setting it up and back. And then I can move that down below or on top. I can do that again. I can duplicate. And then this time I'm going to set it to screen. And then I'm going to set the color overlay for this to white. And then set that beneath others. Rasterize that layer style at 100%. And then from that, I'm going to delete the vector. So I go to my vector layer, I have contiguous unchecked, I select all the empty space around the letting and the holes, and I delete it from that white offset layer. and from the multiply layer, which is this. Yeah. It's starting to look like it's been overprinted a little bit. I missed something with this. <laughs> but that's okay. Let's try that again. Okay, now what I want to do is take all of this, duplicate it, say edit fill, or not edit fill, color overlay with the white. Let's just do a solid white. Let's just do it at 100%. Okay, and then what I want to do is use the fact that these are rasterized, right? Rasterize these layer styles. Move that down underneath and then delete away from it. What I was trying to do to get the offset. So I want to move this up in a way. Not the wrong layer. It's more white. There we are. And like that. And then delete from the white. So I've got these different accents, right? To play with. Mm. 
move this one down. And then I can even try stretching it. It keeps selecting the wrong one. Let's see. Let's turn auto select off. There we go. There are the whites. And those I'll put off to one side. So this isn't a drop shadow, this is duplicating and kind of stretching and offsetting physically your layers. It's called offset printing, that not all your print runs are always going to match. It's that little bit of white. to help it to look more printed. That's pretty cool. Let's take that multiply layer, duplicate it, and move it down underneath. You know, there's just so many different things you can try figuring out your type. Kind of Okay, so next, I'm going to do something a little, a little weird with the type. I'm going to try compositing in those textures, right? Because to really match something hand done, you need to bring in something hand done. So I found this. This is a Japanese woodblock texture. It's in blue ink. I can always change the, uh, the color, right? I just wanted to overlap my text. But what's nice about it is it's one continuous kind of print texture that grade, gradates out in a hand done way. So if I take that and then we cut out from that, just like we did our vector, just like we did with our cartoon jumble way back when. Select the empty space, then say select inverse, and then duplicate that from the composite the smart layer we just brought in. Set it to 100%, right? See that texture there on the absurdity? It's kind of fantastic. Then association, not so much, right? But let's see if we play with the layer style, let's try Soft light. Gives us some visual interest. Let's see, let's try pin light. There we go. That's getting much better. Making it actually look like it's printed on the paper. Right. Yeah. Works well. Now I'll need to do kind of the same thing with the bottom. And I might, well, let's just see. Let's just do the same thing. But I'm going to flip it now. Flip vertical. <laughs> Move this up. All right. And same thing. Use the, the vector type. Select around it, empty space with contiguous turned off, select inverse, and then duplicate from the smart layer that you texture fill. Turn that off, 